You want to make a fabric server to start playing Minecraft mods like these with your friends. We're going to do that in this video, and to get started, you're going to need to download Fabric. There's a link to download Fabric below, where you can go here and click download, or you can just Google Minecraft Fabric Download, and it will take you to the same page. When you're downloading Fabric, you're actually just going to be downloading the installer. So we can just go ahead and click download here and then click download for Windows and it will go ahead and download. The download is the same for both a server and for single player. So luckily, same download here. We can click save. And while that's downloading, I do want to mention this server is only going to be up and running when your computer's up and running. It's only meant for your friends, your family, people you trust. And because of that, I recommend using simple game hosting at the first link in the description down below to start your very own Minecraft server in just a few minutes. You can easily make a Fabric server at any mods you want to it, and there's even one-click installation of hundreds of Curse Wars mod packs. Plus, there's expert live chat support there if you have any issues along the way, so don't struggle to make a Fabric Minecraft server. Do it the simple way at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple. Nonetheless, with the Fabric downloaded, we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and what we want to do is find the Fabric file we got, which is going to be in our downloads folder most likely. Then go ahead and double click on Fabric here and it will open. You may be prompted, are you sure you want to open this? Yes, it's 100% safe to install Fabric. First things first, just leave all of this the same and click install. You have to install Fabric locally for it to work and that's what we just did. Click OK and now click on Server. Next, you want to go to the launcher location here and click the three dots next to it. Click on your desktop and then go ahead and right click and create a new folder. I'm going to name this Fabric Minecraft Server because, well, that's what we're making. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on Fabric Minecraft Server here and click Open. Now, when we go ahead and make sure our Fabric version is set to the one that we want and click Install, it will install Fabric into that folder. But we also need to click Download Server Jar here, which it will now do, and then click Generate on the launch scripts. After we've done all of that, we can click Done, close out of the Fabric installer, and delete it. Now, if we go to our desktop, we have this Fabric Minecraft server folder that we just created here. In here, we've got everything we need. We should have a server.jar, we should have a Fabric server, and we should have a start file. Now, this should be a Windows batch file, and you want to double click on it. Now, at this point, your server will attempt to start. That is if you have Java. If you don't have Java, this will fail entirely, and it won't generate these files and folders, including the eula.txt file, which was just made. If this happens and you don't get any of these files, you need to get Java from the description down below, or we have an in-depth guide on getting it. You can also just Google Java 21 SE, that's important, download. Once you've done that, you also will want to run the jar fix link down below. That's just going to link the jar files to your computer back to Java. Nevertheless, at this point, we can go ahead and minimize the browser, and we have this ELA.txt file. Open that and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that, and then click File, Save. It will now save that file and you are good to go, assuming you did agree to the ULA here when you set this to true. Now double click that start.bat file and your Fabric server is going to start. It's that easy to get it up and running, but how do you add mods to it? Well, in order to add mods to it, we'll need to download some and we have linked down below CurseForge and Modrinth. You can also Google these to find them and both of these are trusted places to get Fabric mods. Just make sure when you go to these sites that you are filtering for Fabric and the game version that you want. Otherwise, the mods won't work. So we can see all the different game versions here. We can do the same thing on Modernth. We can filter for the game version and Fabric. The last thing I want to show you is one, the Fabric API. You'll always want to download this with Fabric. So make sure you come here and download it for the version that you want. Then once you've got the Fabric API, you'll probably want another mod. For example, Waystones here is another mod that we can get that is Fabric compatible. But if I was just to install Waystones on the server, it quite simply would not work. Because if we go to Files here, find the version we want for Fabric, we can click on it and we will see under Related Projects that BALM is required. Often a mod is required for another mod to work. And that's the case here with Waystones. So we can go ahead and we can download this, but we're not done because we need that BALM mod in order for this to work. 99% of the time when you install a Minecraft mod and it doesn't work, it's because you don't have the dependency. Now, what's actually interesting is if we come here and go to the BALM version, it doesn't have any dependencies other than the Fabric API, which we've already gotten. So we can go ahead and download this 100% okay because it doesn't require anything else for it to work. You can check out this on Modernth as well, by the way. If you go to the versions page here and just click on the mod, you will have any dependencies showing up here. 
This doesn't have any, so not a show. Nevertheless, we can now go ahead and minimize the browser. Everything's downloaded. You can stop your server to properly do that. Come over here and type stop and hit enter and it will close out of everything. And now we want to find our mods. That's going to be in the downloads folder. Right here they are. I'm going to quickly move them to the desktop because we're going to need to install them in two places. The first in the mods folder here on the server. Double click on that and then you can just move them over. Now with all of these selected, right click and copy them. You want to make sure that you are copying all of these mods because as I mentioned earlier, we need to install them locally in order for this to work, not just your server. As a matter of fact, every single person who joins your server will need Fabric installed and will need the mods that are on the server installed locally. That's where using CurseForge can actually help with this because it makes it easier to sync everything together. With that being said, we can go ahead and open up the Minecraft launcher. And then in the launcher, we can go to installations at the top up here and we have this Fabric Loader installation. Hover over it, click the folder icon, and you will see that there is a mods folder in here. If not, just make one. Open your mods folder and then we want to paste in here any mods that we want to add which would be right click, paste, waystones, fabric API, and bomb because that's what we added to the server. Now you need to play Minecraft using your fabric installation and once we do that we will be able to join the server. It's also important that you start the server at this point because you probably haven't done that. So again just open your server folder and double click on that start.bat file and the server will now start. At this point you can join your server. It's all going to work. You are good to go. Your friends though can't join and in order for your friends to join even after they've added fabric and installed the mods and done all that you will need to port forward. In the description down below, we have an in-depth guide on port forwarding that covers everything you need to know for Minecraft servers in regards to port forwarding from start to finish. It covers everything, and there's even an in-depth great video to help you out. Nevertheless, at this point, with your Minecraft open and your mods installed, we can go to multiplayer, click proceed, and what we're going to want to do is actually join this server by direct connecting to localhost. You can also add it to your server menu with the IP address localhost. You're the only person that can join via this, but it's great to test things out and make sure they are working. Now, if we come over here and type op and then our username in the server's console, we will be able to use things like slash game mode creative and be able to give ourselves a waystone because, well, instead of going and finding one, why don't we just go ahead and give ourselves one? So we can set this up here as cherry biome, for example. And uh, it's, it's floating, but it does work. And then we could go over to another location. For example, down here below the cherry trees to a plains biome. And then we can save that and go back and forth between the two, up on the mountain and down in the plains. This is a uh, pretty cool seed, by the way. So I wanted to go ahead and uh, make sure we give you the seed that this is. Because, yeah, this is a pretty awesome one. But with this, you now know how to make a Minecraft server with the Fabric Mod Loader. And, by the way, if you do want your friends to join this, you will need to port forward. And then they will join via the public IP. But that is all covered in our port forwarding guide. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one. I'm out. Peace.